The fight for the soul of the grand old party is heating up. And in the past week, two men have stepped forward, ready to fight for the hearts and minds of every wavering Republican out there. One's the maverick in chief, Arizona Senator John McCain, who is battling brain cancer and, and, according to the New York Times, recently told the White House he does not want Trump at his funeral. In his book out later this month, it's called The Restless Wave, McCain writes, quote, This is my last term. I can speak my mind without fearing the consequences much, and I can vote my conscience without worry. And one of his great regrets, according to the book, choosing Sarah Palin as his presidential running mate over Democrat-turned-independent Senator Joe Lieberman. As for the other guy fighting to reshape the GOP in a new image, that would be former Republican and two-term Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld, who tells the libertarian outlet Reason that he's been endorsing candidates, fundraising, and looking to recruit new libertarian candidates along the way, maybe running for president himself. But is there any room for a new color in our strictly black and white, or rather red and blue, political world? Will there ever be another congressional leader like McCain who's willing to cross the aisle on principle and make statements like these from his book? Before I leave, I'd like to see our politics begin to return to the purposes and practices that distinguish our history from the history of other nations. I'd like to see us recover our sense that we are more alike than different. Whether we think each other right or wrong in our views on the issues of the day, we owe each other our respect. Joining me are Virginia Buckingham, former Massport CEO, Chief of Staff for Governors Weldon. Salute you. Good to see you, Jenny. Good to see you. And Steve Kurgan, former CEO of the Democratic National Convention and President of Obama's inaugural committee. Good to see you, too, Steve. Thanks for having me. So Bill Weld left the party. John McCain, I don't want to speak for him, seems to be saying the party left him. Is there room for anybody like either of these guys in the age of Trump and the GOP? Well, I guess I would say only one of those three won the presidency, and that's yeah. Donald Trump, which says something. It says that maybe their appeal is more limited than his. But you never know. John McCain um, is a voice that I think garners respect across the aisle. And I think that that kind of Republican has long existed here in New England, and there's still room for it. Is there room for either of these kinds of guys? I certainly hope so. I mean, look, this is a... The time we're in right now, if my old boss, Ted Kennedy, were still around, he'd be in the same, saying almost the same things that John McCain is saying uh, in his book. And our country elected Donald Trump because I think we've gotten too far away from that. And that's where, when I see people like Wait, Bill Too Weld, far away from what? Too far away from the idea that we can work together without it being a heresy. And theoretically, uh, he was going to work together as theory, per the yeah. art of the deal. Yeah, and, and, and he has done nothing, Donald Trump has done nothing to show that. And it's too bad that, that the Republican Party has um, gotten to a point where two great men like Bill Weld and John McCain um, I feel like there's no room in there. So is there a, a temporary condition that will last as long as Trump is there, or does it survive Donald Trump? Has he changed the Republican Party for a while? So what has really changed? I think he's his own phenom. I think you have yeah, to kind yeah. of separate the two. But then you look at what's been accomplished by this Republican Congress. You look at the tax cuts. You look at North Korea. You just said what was accomplished. Nothing <laughs> the there. No, that, that's a pretty darn good accomplishment. Yeah. Look at the economy, how well the economy is. Unemployment is, what, 3.9 percent? So I think you have to separate Donald Trump, the um personality versus what the Republicans are so still fighting for. So you saying the Republicans should be moving to Donald Trump because of his success in your eyes on taxes, his possible success on North Korea, that he is going in the right direction and these guys should get religion. Is that where you're going? I'm going there except for the way he talks. It's uh, what he does I think you have to pay attention to, not what he says. Is well running, by the way? Do you talk to him? <laughs> I haven't talked to him about that, and I wouldn't be surprised. I, I mean, would... the guy has wanted to be on that stage. He has a lot to say. You he... were surprised when he ran for vice president, though, weren't you? Um, I was a little bit surprised by that. <laughs> surprised at the convention where he basically had to, like, sell his libertarian soul, to promise to be a libertarian forever. Does he know what Aleppo is? <laughs> well, that's probably a I think, yes. he, I think he does. Still you know, too soon. <laughs> well, is, is, people have been very charitable to John McCain, and I understand that of late, in part because of his illness, right. in part because people are thinking of the good old days kind of thing. But a lot of people believe that uh, the woman who he said he wished she hadn't picked is what began, is who began to pave the path for Donald Trump, the beginning of the Tea Party, yeah. the beginning of that sort of more extreme view. Is is he at fault for planting the seed I think that, that blossomed into Donald, I think, Donald Trump? I think that weighs on him. I mean, I, I think... You we, think that's true? I, I definitely... Oh, absolutely. She I does, mean, I, and we'll get I, to I, you I, in a minute. I, 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 I absolutely do. I mean, look, I, I worked in the Senate back in the 90s when when Democrats and Republicans actually got along. The election in 1994 sort of started the rock rolling Duke down Gingrich the hill. And, yeah. That whole, you know, yeah. contract 
contract on America uh, and and really set up Congress to not work with each other because it was it was us or them. And then I think Sarah Palin was the natural outgrowth of that. And then this is the outgrowth of the By the way, party before your head pops off, I was in Minnesota, maybe 50 feet away from her when she gave her speech, one of mm-hmm. the best political speeches mm-hmm. yeah. ever I've heard in my life, but it was all downhill from there. You don't think she is to blame. Well, you don't even think it's blame. You don't think she paved the way for Donald Trump, do you or do you? So I think it's revisionist history on John McCain's part as well as Steve's and others. I think at the time um, it was a smart move. <laughs> Did it pan out? No, but it wasn't all because of her. I mean, there were a lot of other what? factors at play in that election. I think she gets a really bad rap. I've always been a Sarah Palin defender. She was a governor, for goodness sake, which mm-hmm. means something. And I think that we have a double standard when it comes to women. How about it? Yeah, look, I, I think the where he made the mistake was not necessarily picking her. It was the utter lack of vetting. It was giving this decision, by all measure, about five minutes of concrete thought when he decided on her. I think if he had gone with his heart, he would have gone with someone like Joe Lieberman or someone that he really, like Tom Ridge or somebody, who were more um, And would it have mattered? Would he have won? No. If he picked Joe Lieberman? No, no. I'm not saying that she's the reason he no. lost the election. Right. No, way. not at all. Because I think if that die had been cast, probably by that. I have one more question about uh, where did the moderate, socially liberal Republican go? This guy, who we're about to hear speaking at the Republican National Convention, used to be believed to be a moderate, socially liberal Republican. I want you to explain to me what happened to him. Here he is. What happened to there's no black America, there's no white America, there is just America! What happened to it? Speaking of head popping off, Rudy Giuliani the last few days is, uh, well, I won't even describe what he's been. What happened to Rudy Giuliani? Nothing. He's the Rudy Giuliani he's always been. The the Giuliani from Sean Hannity last week? Incredibly independent-minded. He's a... Fighter. He's a street fighter. He's a brawler. I think he probably likes Donald Trump. I think they're alike in that way. I think he's doing what he should be doing for his client. How about you? I- I'm thrilled with what he's doing for his client right now, but I think it shows an utter lack of discipline. But that that is throughout the Trump environment and the whole Trump organization in the White House. Um, and I think he is just yet another head popping up, um, representing all that is bad about the way this president wants to see things. But but except, except the Sorry. only way that Donald Trump wins this is if he turns the public's a mind against a Mueller, and that is what Rudy Giuliani. So that the Republicans in Congress. That's right. Right. Yeah, but they got to they got to hurry up because there aren't going to be enough Republicans in Congress come January. And I, I honestly, and I honestly just don't think him getting out there and, and and leading to an utter confusion of what did he say? What did he say? What is the actual truth? And by the way, the idea that he was trying to prove the way out of this wasn't a campaign finance violation, and then the next day saying, confused? "Can you imagine? Are you confused?" Can, can you, no, it's a campaign they finance wanted. violation. I no, was, <laughs> they wanted to confuse people, and they did. But the problem is he gave clear evidence, at least you know, clear cause for the, the special counsel's office to ask the questions about, was this really about... I mean, he literally said, can you imagine if this had come out just days before the election? There was clearly a payment due to cover up an affair, a payment to benefit his chance of getting but elected president. But was it a payment which from is, a campaign fund? It doesn't, need to be camp- no. no, it doesn't need to be a campaign fund. It needs to be money exchanged in order to keep something out of the public that would benefit or hurt the there candidate. There could be dozens of these for all right, we there know. probably are. You know, right. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Listen to you. You're right. Trump uh, doesn't know what he's doing. He'll never even get the Republican nomination. <laughs> I probably sat here and said that exactly. Jeannie, it's great to I see you again. Thank you so much, Steve. You will. Take care, both of you.